All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to do our setup method, and essentially we're going to use the built-in method pin mode to initialize and enable the motors. So we're going to use pin mode, the name of the pin, and then what it is, is it an input or is it an output? And since we're driving motors, it's going to be an output. So we'll need this for every single pin that's being used. So we got three for the left and three for the right. So we've got the first enable, then we've got IN, 1L for the input 1 on the left, IN 2L for input 2 on the left, then we've got enable B, and then IN 1R, IN 2R. There we go. And then what we can do is we can enable the motors if you want. Uh, it's personal preference. Some people don't like to enable the motors on initialization, but um, just for safety reasons, but because it's just a little, little, you know, toy robot car, it should be okay to initialize them. If you initialize or enable the motors, rather, um, at the beginning of your setup method, uh, you'll be able to use them throughout without having to enable them. So it just makes it a little bit easier. So to enable them, we're just going to write a digital value of a 1. So the digital equivalent of 1 in Arduino is, is considered high and the digital equivalent to zero is considered low. And it's all capital letters. So we're going to just, I'm gonna put a note in here, say that we're going to enable both motors. And to do that, we'll do a digital write. Digital write, and we're gonna enable the left enable pin. That's gonna be high. And digital write, we're going to enable the um, enable B. And that's also going to be high. So now that they're enabled, we can use them. They'll be readily accessible throughout the rest of this code, unless we disable them. And so you could have a method in here called disable motors, enable motors, and you could call it in here um, however you like to do it. Um, but I think the next step is really to just get this robot to move forward. So the challenge here is um, command this robot to move forward and stop. And so we're going to create ourselves a forward method. And to do that, we'll use the uh, truth table right here. So for, for both of these, we've got to find the line that says turn forward. And so to do that, we need to enable the motor. So we've already done that. And we need to set the input 1 to 0 and the input 2 to 1. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. So I'm just going to call this method forward. And we're going to digital write the input 1. I'll move this over a little bit just to make it really easy to see. We'll close out this little graphic for now. And we'll do input 1, IN1L, and that's going to be low. And we'll write uh, IN uh, 2L, that's going to be high. And so that's our forward method. And we can talk about speed. So speed is really cool. So if you have the motor enabled, um, then you can actually send a analog write to the enable pin and that'll set the speed for you. So what I mean is, we can go analog, right? And we can go analog to the enable, and we can set it, let's say, at 127. We'll just say like half speed. And that's a 0 to 255, if you're wondering where that number came from. And that's about it. So what I recommend doing is taking this code, um, throw it into loop, so we'll go ahead and we'll call forward so that we can use it. Um, we'll delay for, let's say we'll delay for uh, two seconds. And then what we'll have to do is we'll have to stop the motor. So let's go ahead and write a quick little method here uh, called stop motor. And we'll just make sure that we set everything. I'm personally a fan of just setting everything to low. Um, but I, you could very well set everything high if you wanted to. I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I just, I don't know, I prefer the low version. Digital right, IN1L 
low and digital right and 2L low. And then I'm going to even just set the speed analog analog right ENA to zero. You could also disable the motor. The problem with doing that here is you're going to have to re-enable um, every time you want to move again. So I'm not going to disable the motors. If you were doing like a Mars rover, you need some sort of safety application, definitely disable the motors when you stop. Um, and so now we can delay and then we can stop. Stop the motor. And let's see. What I'm thinking we may need to do is throw this inside of a loop. And this is where like testing really helps with this. So let's just talk a little bit about how a loop works. So a loop goes top to bottom, and when it gets to the bottom, it goes back to the top, and it keeps executing and executing over and over again. And, and unless you lose power um, or you tell it to stop, um, or break out of the loop, it's going to just keep running continuously. And so we don't necessarily want the robot to go from, this, from the forward, so it does its forward execution, it waits for two seconds, so it continues that move for two seconds, and then it stops, and then it goes back to the top and it goes forward again. We don't necessarily want to do that. We want to make sure that it goes forward, it delays, and then we throw it inside of this forever loop, so this while loop, because while well, one is always true, it'll sit inside of here and it'll just stay stopped. Um, and that's typically the, um, the functionality you're looking for. You don't necessarily want to go forward for a time period and then stop and then go forward again. You want to go forward and then stop and then not move again. And so you have to test this out. Um, a lot of what I've found with programming these types of robots, and I've been doing this for a while, is um, there's a lot of different ways to do the exact same thing. And there's also a lot of times when you get the hang of it and you're writing this code, you could create yourself a rough draft and then start testing along the way and improving the functionality. And so I'm, at, I'm kind of at a point where I would, first of all, compile this, make sure I haven't missed any, any semicolons here. I've got digital write, um, in, oops, I put up a T in here, so that should fix that problem. So it'll just get rid of all the syntax errors and download the code to the robot, power it up, get the code on there, power it up, and test it out, and then make modifications along the way. And you'll notice that there is a flaw uh, in, this, in this code as it stands. And the flaw is, and hopefully you picked up on this, if you did, congrats, you got it, you're ready to go. Um, if you didn't pick up on it, no problem. Um, but we've only actually driven the uh, left side of the robot. So the left side is going to be going forward and the right side isn't going to do anything. So it's going to actually just be making a right turn. Um, and so as the code stands, you're going to need to go through and do the exact same thing for the right side. So we'll go ahead and we'll make that little update right here. And because they're opposite sides, I'm thinking they're probably going to be flipped. And this is also based on your wiring. So if you've got your wiring, actually, let's take a look at this controller. So if you've got both of your motors feeding into here, You've got a set of motors here, and your leads are, are, are plugged into here. Uh, two sets of leads on either side, and they're the same leads. Um, it's probably going to be a lot different than if you flip the leads and you have a red and black and then another red and black into the separate pins versus both reds, both blacks on separate pins. Um, and so don't think that... Um, that's a problem because you can fix it in software. Just know that your logic may be flipped because of the way it's wired. And so typically, since it's opposite sides, I'm going to err on the side that it, it's probably flipped because they're mirror images of each other. Um, but that's something you're going to have to test out. So as you go through here, you can kind of make some educated guesses and use the table to help guide you make decisions, but you just know that it may not be perfect. So when you turn this robot on, you get the code on here, it may not actually work the way you think it will, 
but you'll notice like, oh, I've got one wheel that's going backwards. Maybe I plugged it in wrong. Or maybe I can change the software to correct for it. And so we'll go ahead and we'll stop to the other side. All right. And so that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about in this uh, robotics guide. Um, just how to get started with uh, mobile robots, how to make the thing move, because if you can get it to move, then you can create a lot of functionality. So I challenge you to copy this code, go through it, tune it for your robot. So you might even need to play around. I've noticed like a lot of times you've got your robot here and you've got one side has you know a speed of 125 and the other side has a speed of 100 and um, you know 50 and they're it's going straight whereas if you put them both at 150 you might be wobbling like you might be slowly making an arc one way or another and so that's what i i recommend just going through some motors are a little more powerful than others but not every single motor is going to be calibrated the same and, and so you may need to just go through the code and like do a little update, tune it so that it goes perfectly straight and then stops. And then um, I challenge you to create methods for backwards, create methods for left, create methods for right. And then I also talk about creating a method, one method to go in every direction. And so I've got a quick little example of that. Let me go ahead and bring that up. So this is a project that I did using light sensors, so photoresistors. And essentially what, what it does is you hold a flashlight and you shine it in front of the robot. And uh, essentially what it does is the robot will move towards the light, so it'll follow you around. And so I created this method. You can see this is the actual main code. And look at how short it is. And so ideally, you would have this universal method that you could call and command it to go left, right, forward, back with one method. Um, whereas before, we had to create a forward method, we had to create a backwards method, we had to create a left, a right, a stop. This method actually does everything all in one. It's really cool. So I'm going to kind of show you what this looks like. So the method is actually called go. And go takes in a left speed, a right speed, and then how long. And depending on what this value is, if it's greater than zero, it'll go for that duration. If it's equal to zero, then it'll go infinitely long. Um, so it'll just go until some other command happens. And it's pretty cool because you can see, like, this is how uh, a right turn looks. This is how going forward looks. And this is left and then again forward. And then zero would obviously, or stop would obviously just be setting all these to zero. And so that's just something to consider as you're tuning your control system for the robot. Don't think that it's just, let's program it, we get it to move, and now let's just go solve, you know, all the world's problems with this robot. I think it's really important to create um, really rugged methods that can be reused as you go on. So this. So basically, I did just that. I created all the forward, the left, the right, the back. And then once I got familiar with it, I actually created this library, which is what you're seeing here. Um, so it's called the create library. It uses this controller. And so in any, in any configuration, whether it's a four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive, if you're using this thing for a mobile robot, you can use the create uh, library and command it to move. So it takes moving completely out of the picture and you can focus on processing information such as sensor data or um, missions or whatever you're trying to do with your robot. You don't have to worry about moving. So that's all I have for right now. If you do have any questions, find me on Facebook. I'm most active on Facebook. It's at Learn Robotics. Um, message me with your questions about getting started with robotics. I'm going to be doing a little bit longer course on mobile robots in the near future. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to give you a little bit more information on how to take your Arduino skills from the prototyping level to the robot level. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed this. Go ahead and rewatch this video as many times as you need to, and I will see you on the blog on robotics.org.